Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Five most important breakout players for this Colorado program heading into 2024. And this is one of those programs that this kind of conversation is extremely exciting, right? We've talked a lot about Colorado during the offseason. A lot of the conversations, I mean, surrounding guys like quarterback Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. But I think a lot of Colorado fans feel that if this team reaches its potential, in 2024, it's not just going to be about Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. I mean, Coach Prime brought a ton of new talent coming into this program, but specifically at spots where this team needed to improve on heading into 2024. I want to highlight some of those players that I think need to break out for Colorado to kind of reach their potential in the 2024 year. A lot of different names to choose from. Would love to hear from you guys in the comments section as well before we get into it. And as always, just want to say thank you to you guys and covering, talking about this Colorado program. It's been an absolute blast. The amount of support the Colorado fans have shown truly does mean a lot. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. But much more importantly, again, would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. So many players that we could talk about, but I kind of looked at it and said, all right, where are the parts of this Colorado roster that need to be improved on heading into 2024? And I tried to focus on I mean, some of those players as the breakout candidates for this conversation. Without further ado, let's get in to the first name on the list. And that's former Ohio State running back Dallin Hayden. And you look at Colorado last year, and one of the few things that they struggled with on the offensive side of the football was not only pass protecting for Shadur Sanders, but it was also running the football. And you look at the numbers from last year, 2.3 yards per carry. That was 133rd in the country, only 68 rushing yards per game. I think one of the conversations to have in terms of, you know, how Colorado takes that jump in 2024 is getting a little bit more of a run game going. And yes, this offensive line is going to be dramatically improved. We're going to talk about an offensive lineman on this list, but and part of a way that you can take a little pressure off pass protection with the offensive line is, you know, stay on schedule a little bit with the run game. Turn some second and fives, some third and threes. You can kind of protect your offensive line in pass protection a little bit better. And I think Dallin Hayden certainly can be that running back to keep this Colorado offense on schedule, you take a look at Dallin Hayden. I have some buddies who are big Ohio State fans. They were fired up about this kid. I mean, you saw him really break out as a true freshman. Didn't get as much opportunity during the 2023 year. This kid can play. Ohio State fans knew it. I know the Colorado fans know it. If he emerges as you know, running back that potentially goes for 700 to 1,000 yards for this Colorado team, it's going to mean – the absolute world to this offense is going to take a little heat off the offensive line and pass protection. I think Dallin Hayden, a, a massive storyline for this Colorado program heading into 2024. Next one on the list. And we've been doing a couple of these, actually a lot of these, and we haven't included a true freshman yet. I'm going to break the rules here and talk about former five-star offensive tackle, Jordan Seaton, going to be a true freshman starting at the left tackle spot. And you go back to when we talked about Jordan Seaton committing to Colorado and said if there was one offensive tackle in the 2024 class that could play early as a freshman, it was probably going to be a guy like Jordan Seaton. And you look at Jordan Seaton as from the physical traits and say, all right, he's a next level athlete for someone that's 6'5, 300 pounds plus. He has a 6'10 wingspan. This is going to be a true freshman starting at left tackle at the power five level. There are going to be some growing pains. That being said, we all know Jordan Seaton has the capability of being a well above average tackle in the big 12 during his freshman year. Can he put that together in 2024 is going to be a massive storyline. And you look at this Colorado offensive line as a whole and it's completely revamped. It's deeper, but I think the players that are going to be starting for Colorado on the offensive line are a heck of a lot better as well. And if you can get Jordan Seaton to be that an all-conference caliber player as a true freshman, that's massive for this Colorado offense. The last one I want to talk about on the offensive side of the football, and that is wide receiver Amarion Miller. Now, I want to talk about the wide receiver room and not just Amarion Miller. Now, you look at Travis Hunter, you look at guys like Wester, those are going to be 
the go-to wide receivers for this Colorado offense. I'd probably throw in Jimmy Horn as well. You look at what kind of wide receiver Colorado really wants to kind of break out in 2024. It's one of those bigger bodied wide receivers that can work vertically down the field. One, we know Shadur Sanders can throw the deep ball exceptionally well. But I think more importantly, you look at how this Colorado offense is you know, kind of structured and it is, hey, we want to get the football out on time quickly to our playmakers in space. I think one of the questions is how do we manufacture that space for guys like Wester and Travis Hunter in some of those shorter intermediate route trees? I think it's having some wide receivers that really can threaten defenses down the field. And you look at Amarion Miller, averaged almost over 21 yards per catch during his true freshman year. He's certainly one of those guys. You're bringing Will Shepard, who I wanted to include, but to be frank, he's already broken out. He was one of the better wide receivers in the SEC. He certainly gives Colorado that bigger bodied boundary receiver that can work vertically. And you know, one other guy that I'd throw around there is Cordell Russell. Coming in in the summer from TCU, this was another former top 100 national recruit. He is just put together for a wide receiver, a big physical frame that can work vertically down the field, has a track and field background. And then Colorado is just looking for that true big bodied X wide receiver that can work vertically down the field, whether that's Amarion Miller, again, a guy that averaged over 28 yards per catch his high school days, and then over 21 yards per catch as a true freshman, whether it's Will Shepard, whether it's Cordell Russell, if they can get a wide receiver that can be that vertical threat in this Colorado offense, that's not going to be only big to create some explosive plays down the field, but also I think Travis Hunter and Wester are going to certainly benefit from this kind of wide receiver. Now moving over to the defensive side of the football, I want to talk about just a, nobody's really talking about him, but a very intriguing prospect, at least for me, and that's defensive lineman Quincy Wiggins coming over from LSU. Now, why did I choose Quincy Wiggins as one of the most important breakout players is, although Quincy Wiggins will probably not be a starter for Colorado, you have guys like BJ Green and Dayon Hayes who are some of the better edge rushers in the country. One of the things that we're looking for for Colorado, specifically along both sides of the line of scrimmage, is depth. And especially on the defensive line, you look at the past national championship caliber teams, the Georgia Bulldogs, Michigan last year. Not only did they have really good defensive linemen, which we think Colorado has heading into 2024, it's more important to have good depth on the defensive line. We got a lot of big bodies that we got to keep fresh for 12 games of a season, four quarters of a game. Quincy Wiggins is a guy that I think has the potential to be one of the better defensive linemen that we see in this conference. I think the question is, can he put it together? And you look at Quincy Wiggins and said, this kid coming out of high school is always going to be a year three, year four kind of guy. He was a basketball player until his junior year of high school where he started to play football, obviously excelled at it because he's a freaky athlete. But we knew there was going to be not necessarily growing pains, but some more development that Quincy Wiggins had to go through. This was the year that we kind of said he'd break out when he came out of high school. Can he break out going into year three? I think there's certainly a chance that he can. He's got, I mean, the traits that you're talking about, are truly impressive. He's a former top 100 recruit for a reason, has over a seven-foot wingspan. This kid's dripping with potential. And if he can emerge as that two- to three-deep guy that you can come in, play 10 to 15 snaps a game, 15 to 20 snaps a game, and give you really dominant play, that's a massive storyline for Colorado. I'd probably put Samuel Lola in a very similar category where you got two guys that are extremely talented going into year three of their college football careers. I think the best football for them is ahead of them. And can they reach that potential in 2024? Massive storyline. Last player I want to talk about, and the Colorado fans that have been rocking with the fellas the last couple of weeks and months know we weren't going to talk about breakout players without talking about DJ McKinney. This is my guy, and I really don't understand why there wasn't a lot of buzz around him when he committed to Colorado. You go back to the Oklahoma State film and say this is a cornerback that has the potential to be an all-conference kind of guy, and why is that so important for Colorado? One, they're going to have a good secondary. They got a lot of talent back there, but if you get a guy in DJ McKinney to really break out and be kind of a true cornerback one opposite Travis Hunter, one that allows Travis Hunter to maybe – 
take a little break and not have to play as much on the defensive side of the football, keep them fresh on the offensive side. But I think more importantly, it lets you get really creative with guys like Shiloh Sanders. If you have some cornerbacks that you know can handle themselves on an island, let's go put Shiloh Sanders in the box more. Let's go blitz him off the edge a little bit more. Let's allow him to be closer to the line of scrimmage. You can only do that if you have cornerbacks that you know can hold their own out on the boundary. I think DJ McKinney can be that guy, and if he can reach that potential going into his first year with Colorado, I think, I mean, obviously, one, it's great to have a very good cornerback, but more importantly, it lets Colorado get a little bit experimental and aggressive with how they want to use their safeties in this defense as well. And we all know Shiloh Sanders, he is at his best when he's coming downhill, when he's around the line of scrimmage. DJ McKinney, if he steps up, can allow Shiloh Sanders to do a little bit more of what he does best in impact football games. Really excited about this Colorado team. Again, a lot of unknowns because of how much new talent has come in, but this is unarguably one of the more exciting teams, if not the most exciting team heading into 2024. Would love to hear some breakout players that you guys have in mind as well. Appreciate y'all rocking with the fellas. If you guys do enjoy the content, again, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.